It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's another DJ Roundtable here on Twitch. And if you're watching this over on the tubes, on YouTube, on a Monday or Tuesday, wherever day you're watching it out on, we do this live on Twitch at 8 p.m. Central Time. So if you want to ask questions live, you're more than welcome to. We love when people come over to uh, and talk in the chat and say things and talk about stuff and ask questions. We're here always to, uh, oh, here comes Dwayne. We're here always to uh, kind of talk things out and talk around things and uh, share our ideas and thoughts. And uh, tonight, again, it is uh, summertime here in Chicago. Uh, Brentley's not with us tonight. But like anything else, people are doing gigs, people have stuff, stuff going on. And as always, we thank you, everyone who is tuning in here, as well as all the DJs here tonight. Uh, it's always great to see. Uh, I know that we got some weather moving in. I heard my weather radio going off, saying about uh, severe storms. Hopefully it doesn't affect us too much, but we'll see. If you hear my dog come running in, she's scared that she has to hang out here in the office because it's... The darkest room in the house, I guess. <laughs> she's just, she likes hanging out here. So if you see a dog running around here, don't worry. She's okay. <laughs> but I want to thank you all for tuning in. And again, if you do me a favor, while you're here, make sure you smash that like button, click the bell icon, subscribe to the channel, or do in the order of make sure you hit the bell icon. You know, last, subscribe, as well as make sure you put the thumbs up. Or thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icon. Whatever way you want to do it, do that. And also do me a favor. We want to grow the channel. Make sure you tell other people about the show. Make sure you tell about all these great DJs here who are sharing their ideas and their thoughts and everything of what we do. So I wanted to hit you guys with this one tonight. And we just got off, uh, Tracy and I, with a client talking to them about a wedding for this year uh, in September which is pretty crazy crowded way it is for us, at least. Um, I want to ask you guys this one right here, which is kind of a question I think we ran into. Not just a couple, but a couple couples we run into this. When you're talking to your couples about uh, a wedding, about an event, or a birthday party, or whatever, and you're talking to them about lighting, how you do lighting, either up lighting, dance lighting, or anything like that, what are the key things you point out how you do things different from other DJ companies? What what do you see is a trend or what do you see that you're like, you know, this is something that, you know, I know it's popular, but I want to do something different. I want to either go bigger or I want to have this kind of light or that kind of light. Is there something there that you like to make things different and how do you differentiate yourself from other DJ companies? So, when you talk to clients, what do you talk to them about when you talk about the lighting? So I'm going to hit way over here with Taylor and Jordan, which uh, they're down in their uh, their basement right there having fun. And uh, I, I really want to uh, – I see you got a table back there. You're going to make some dinner. I think we're going to come over there and have some dinner. So I'll grab Tracy. We'll come over later on then. <laughs> so anyways, how would you – how when you talk to people – um, how do you differentiate yourself from other DJ services? You want to start or? I could start, I guess. I'll put my little input on it. Um, at least when I talk about it, it's more of we don't charge by like the amount of lighting we bring. It's just we'll go to the venue. If we need to bring like 15 up lights, we'll bring 15. If you need 30 we'll bring 30 we just kind of fix it into our price already um of what they're paying um i don't know i never really think about the what that's more him like how it's gonna look <laughs> um we kind of shoot for more like hidden eloquent um we we get a lot of the same two questions are you do you have lasers I don't know why everyone asks that. I don't, but it's Matt's fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they're talking about the kind of lasers Matt's have. I think they're talking about Spencer lights. Mm -hmm. um, and then I always get, 
well, how much extra to bring X amount of uplights? And I always tell them if the venue needs 10, I'm bringing 10. If the venue needs 50, I'm bringing 50. I mean, it doesn't, uh, we don't really charge like for uplighting as like a they, service. It's just with our DJ services already. Kind but of I'm more for, I, we just use, I do par lighting and like a dinner, most of the night I point it towards the ceiling. Um, and then during dancing, I'll go and, you know, kind of adjust them for the dance floor. And then we just have up lighting. Um, I am going to get, I do want to get some accent up lighting, like some chroma cannons or something that I can accent. Um, I do like those that you can kind of use them as a pin spot. Um, cause we do kind of that kind of st stuff more than like, um, the laser light show and stuff. I, I mean, I have some stuff, but I did, I really, we mostly have par lighting and up lighting and we kind of try to keep it, uh, where, where try we try to keep them, it simple, not overdo it too much. Um, yeah, and that's, that, that's just... <laughs> unless that's what they want, but if they have no preference, we kind of. Just stick with the up lighting and the par. And you you customize it. And that, that's one thing. I, I've heard DJs go, what do you charge per light? Well, I, I kind of do the same thing you guys do. And it's not per mm -hmm. light, it's per job. What does what does the venue need? What lighting does it need? Does it need mm -hmm. 10 lights? Does it need 20 lights? Does it need 30 lights? And I charge accordingly to how much work there is in it. If there's a lot of work to it, there's a lot of lighting. If I'm doing a 200 a 200 person wedding versus a 60 person wedding, the room's going to be for 200 person wedding is going to be three times the size. Do my what am I highlighting? What am I architectural lighting? What am I doing? What what kind of uh, feel am I trying to put into the room? I I'm not one of those people who like to put a light every two feet, and then everything is that color. I like to have things pops of color. So having lights spaced. And having it as an accent and adding flavor. And it sounds like you guys do the same thing I do. It's not, I don't charge, you know, I look at, okay, if you want 15 lights, I'm going to charge you this. Well, no, I feel you do the right amount of lights for that room, for that venue, for what the feel you're trying to do. And you're not trying to dictate, well, you need this many lights, this many lights. You can kind of look at a lot of places and say, okay, either I've been there before, it's kind of similar to this place. And they got through Google Maps, you can look at pictures on there. Uh, you can kind of figure out, okay, does six lights work? Does it 12 lights work? Does it 10 lights work? What are they paying for? What, How hard is it to do? And what kind of look do I want to have? And having that elegant lighting, I think, is very important. Yeah, and and I, what kind of look are they looking for? I mean, if I'm setting up three hours of trussing with 16 moving heads on it, I'm obviously charging more. But when I say you get what, you know, usually most of my clients don't – know what they want so i and uh we're you know kind of we try to hide it as best as possible we use corners and things like that but mostly up lighting and i'm trying to get better at accenting things in the room like if there's a beam that goes like this way to actually like shine it you know instead of just the tiger stripe up light thing um because i'm guilty of that i i, I good i know djs who use wash lights uh that right there has a beautiful look you do it right, you know, washing the ceiling, washing a wall. You know, there's a lot of things you can do to do things, to do lighting. Um, I'm going to go over to um, over to Matt in California, which I know he's a DMX wizard and has a lot of great lighting. How do you, um, when you talk to a client and you're talking about lighting in a room, how do you do intelligent and explain to them what you're doing differently than they're a DJ? You're going to come in and do what to their wedding? Well, I always tell them that uh, what makes us different is, you know, our lighting's all computer controlled. And uh, I tell them that what we do is we create like an atmosphere on the dance floor and a true like environment out there. Because like the way that I do wedding shows, I say I don't have I, I should have other D like pick I should have videos of other DJs to show like how bad they are. But I also am not that kind of person. But I basically like imitate them and say, oh, you know, other DJs, your dance floor will look like this. And it's just people kind of like, uh, you know, they're just kind of like grooving a little bit, but they're not raging their face off, basically. In, in layman's terms, like we create a party. Like if you are just looking for somebody to play music, don't talk to me uh, in, in a nicer way, I say. But 
so I, I basically tell them we, so my, my whole spiel is like, you know, we create this and I say, we mostly do that through not only great music, but our light show that is, you know, coordinated with the music. We have a dedicated lighting operator. Uh, we can add lasers, we can add special effects like CO2 and it, it's timed with the music. So think of like a concert when you go to a concert and the beat drops, you get CO2 cannons shooting up, you get sparklers, you get a blinder effect, um, stuff like that. So that's kind of how I, how I describe it. I also, um, I don't charge per uplight. I do include like a certain amount. Um, but it's really like, how much is the couple paying me? Like which rate sheet did they get? Um, cause if they got a deal, I'm not going to go out of my way to add extra stuff and set up longer. But if they are paying for like the biggest package, sure. They'll get 30 uplights. Or if, you know, they're on the full pricing versus like a discounted pricing, like I'm going to bring 22 instead of 18 or something like that so um yeah that's that's kind of how i do it um i got a lot of videos that i show them too uh but again most of the time clients don't know what they want and they don't know how many up lights or what lighting or anything so it helps to just kind of have it in your package of like here's the price and here's what's included and then we have a step above package, which, oh, okay, you want the lasers, you want the CO2, you want the special effects, that's this package. And if you want something right in the middle, bigger lighting, but not super crazy, we've got this package. So that's how I sell it. And it seems to work pretty well. Yeah. And that's, that, that's an important thing. Um, you know, I'm seeing, hold on one second here. Uh... We have a little technical problem here. Oh. Yeah, you're uh, you're silent on Twitch. Oh, you should not be silent anymore. anymore. You got it? Here we go. You should hear me now. Mm -hmm. There we go. There you go. Yep, you're up. Yep, it, it, a little glitch in audio here on Twitch. So you guys on YouTube hear me loud and clear, so that's not a problem. And uh, also on uh, in the uh, in the Zoom chat, you guys hear it loud and clear as well. the uh, the big The big thing with with anything with lighting, uh, you are right. People don't know how many lights they need. It's how many lights they should have. And you know, you look, you size up a venue, you size up a room. Again, kind of like Taylor and Jordan. Do they need ten lights? Do they need twenty lights? What kind of vision do they have? And having pictures of rooms that you've done lighting on, up lighting colors, give them an idea of not just what you can do, but color palettes and how you can transform a room, how you could take some white lights and highlight an arch or something like that, and then have other color lights throughout the room to highlight that area. So there's stuff you can do, you can show, showcase what you feel is best for their particular job. And if you just say, hey, you know, 15 up lights is $200. Okay. You may not need 15 up lights or you may need more than 15 up lights. That's why you should always, well, I feel you should walk in intelligently, go, I'm going to charge you a fee for this, but that fee is for me to make sure it's customized for the two of you. And that's one of the things how when we sell stuff, when we do lighting, um, is how we differentiate ourselves between us and DJ down the street is how you're going to do lighting. And again, it's very important to have pictures. And if you're looking at stuff, I feel that pictures are, say a thousand words, truly do. And I'm going to go over to a cool thing in uh, South Carolina and uh, ask him. Uh, I know he does a lot of parties and stuff like that. And he does some lighting. He does a lot of cool stuff there. But when you talk to people about when you do your lighting, how you have it set up, do you explain to people? Do you have some? You, I know you have tons of gig logs. And by the way, his YouTube channel is up and running. So make sure you go over, follow his YouTube channel. He needs some love over there. Uh, he's a lot of great gig logs, including some walkthroughs on equipment. But when you talk to people about lighting, do you show people video or photos or anything like that of the lighting you do at, at previous events? Well, I never get asked about my setup uh, when I get booked a gig. All they want is a good party and good music. I mean, my lights are already included with my DJ setup, and I basically charge the hour. I don't really overcharge for extras like lights and stuff. I just keep it at a basic price. And that's how I'm different because I'm cheap. You know, I'm, I'm real easy to afford. But again, so you I never, I never you get asked about 
I never get asked about lights and I just use two Xiaomi Watch Fix 2s and they buy an entire dance floor. So I never really get asked about lights and most of the venues here are pretty small. Well, yeah, and that, that, but the thing is, you still want to differentiate yourself from other DJs. How you use those lights? Hey, you know what? I, 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 I connect one to the other. They talk to each other, so they go in sync. Or yeah. I don't connect to them, and they, they do they are opposite. So that way, it gives a full room of lighting. This yeah. is ways you can explain to people what you do differently than DJ down the street. You know, DJ down the street does this. I do this. I like how this looks. I like my cut my clients. My previous clients have said this, this, and this. So it helps you not only grow, but also helps you when you talk to someone, you can sell them on that. And maybe down the road you get enough money and you go, hey, I'm gonna go buy a couple pars and do some uplight behind me or next to me. Or hey, you know what? I'm gonna highlight the doorway. I'm gonna highlight this, highlight that, and it gives you options down the road. And you know, I it, do, uh, yeah, I do use sound switch with DMX. I use two DMX cables, one to go to the controller and the other to go from one light to the other. And it works very well with the Mixstream Pro. So I never get really asked about lights. Well, again, that, that's one of the things you can always point out now. <laughs> now you can talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And you got the sound switch. Sound switch yeah. is a great thing because you can change the moods of what you're doing and hit a button and, you know, pretty much do it. Now Matt does full software and program stuff to change. So that way, you know, he has in different moods, different lighting. And you can do kind of do the same thing with sound switch and hit a button to do different things at different times. Now I know in North Carolina, Jeff does weddings and does corporate events and does uh, uh, dances at schools and stuff like that. How, when you talk to your clients, when they're booking you, how do you talk to them about lighting? Do you talk to them about, Hey, you know what? I, you know, I've done this before. Some up lighting would look great at this venue or, you know, I, this is what I do with lighting. I, I would try and blind people or I try to have really cool lights above people's heads or try to do something on the ceiling or on the floor. Or what do you try to do to change what you, everybody else does? Well, for me personally, I, I have about three levels of lighting that I offer. Um, the rest of the setup is pretty similar for most events. I mean, I will change speakers depending upon the amount of crowd there, but the lighting packages are, are three levels. The basic level is just up lighting. And, and the reason I offer that at a low level is because it is so easy to drop a, drop a light and just, you know, boom, turn it on. It's DMX, it's ready to go. Um, so, you know, that 20 years ago, you couldn't do that. You know, there was no battery operated lights. You know, DMX was, you know, only at the biggest concerts, you know, you went to. Um, so, you know, now it is so easy to do that, that, you know, if I bring eight or even 16 up lights, it takes me five minutes or less to, to drop those around the venue. Uh, and again, it's up to the venue uh, if it needs it or not. My next level up is uh, just adding some uh, wash effects for crowd uh put those on top of the, the speakers normally um the the highest level is normally when i have to bring um uh my uh what are they the uh I forgot the name of them now they're the totems the rockville totems glow totems as i call them because i put lights i put uh, up lights in those uh, to build those, to put scrims on them and put moving heads on top is a little extra. Well, it's a lot of extra work. It adds an extra probably 15 minutes of setup and teardowns. So that is my top level to add moving heads uh, for the for the crowd. So that's how I sell it as like three different options, three different levels, you know, depending on what the client is looking for. For me, the, the, the separation for me from, from other DJs uh, is usually going to be the video uh, plays that I, I put on my monitor, you know. So uh, that's, you know, it's not a big seller. Not not a lot of people want that or request that, but when they see it, they, you know, like the last wedding, I had three people come up to me and they were like, oh, that's just incredible. I can't believe you're playing music videos for us. You know, that's really a game changer. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it comes with most every package that I do, um, if it's at in the evening. Um, so th that's my differentiation. The, the lighting, I don't really differentiate myself in lighting that much, um, other than it's computer controlled, it's DMX, and 
you know, there are a lot of DJs who don't do that. Uh, so I guess that separates me to some degree. But uh, my three levels, are, that's how I kind of sell it to uh, to the clientele. And that's the thing is that does differentiate you because you can have give three different levels versus a lot of people are one trick ponies. And that's 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 a nice thing to have in your repertoire that you can go up to and go, hey, you know what? If you want first level, it's basic lighting, step up, and then you have the ultimate lighting that does this and this and this for your event. So that way it gives you a full effect. And that's kind of one of the things that customizing it to the couple, but it's it's like going into a restaurant, going to McDonald's Burger King, or here in Chicago and Portillo's. <laughs> and Jordan and Taylor go to Portillo's, they order a cake shake, but they want extra chocolate in their cake shake. So they extra extra chocolate. It's customizing it. Um, but they have a number on there what it is. Or you go and order a ha- you know a meal from wherever. There you order a number four, whatever, and you can customize. Hey, I don't want this on. I don't want that. Or I want extra this or extra. And that's the thing is having a little versatility is great, but you still have packages. Hey, this is my package one, package two, package three, and this is what I can offer you. And let me show you the difference between them. And that right there, again, goes back to having that uh, photography and that video and so forth that people can look at and go, wow, I that looks awesome. I want that at my wedding, at my school party, or I want that at my uh, event. Yeah, so and that's cool. a great thing. Wow. The um the big thing also is that um, I'm gonna go to Dwayne here in a second, is when we do stuff, it's you know, that communication is, is very key. Dwayne, for you, sir, I know you play a little bit lighting and stuff like that. How do you do your lighting? Do you ex- explain to customers how you're different than other DJs? Do you, you know, do things just one level of lighting or do you have multiple levels of lighting or how do you do your lighting? Uh, what differentiate you from other DJ services in your area? I have um, different packages for different scenarios, but my main thing is not to really go in and compare myself to anybody else. I ask them what their vision is, what they would like, and then go from there. And then if they need some um, pictures or videos, I can show the videos and stuff. But um, most of the time, I just give them a package. Most of my people just want, like, dance floor lighting and some up lighting. And then depending on what I think they might want, I might offer some other, um, you know, options too. So, yeah, I don't differ and, and try to do something, you know, more than what I can do. I just see what they want, what they would like to get, and then go from there. And that's the again. That's the thing is that you still can. Uh, what you're saying is that you have your kind of your more standard light system that you do stuff with, but you customize it for the event. You go in and you say, "Okay, fine, great. This is a small party with 50, 60 people in a small room. I don't need 50 up lights. I only need I only need 10 up lights around the room and a couple of dance lights. And kind of like what what Jeff has." couple different levels, a couple different scales, but you kind of customize it for that special event. And that to me is a huge, huge thing. And uh, Taylor and Jordan, uh, I'm going to go back to you really quickly. I don't know if you guys run into this. um, And I'm going to ask someone else here in a second here. Uh, Monograms, gobos, whichever you want to call it. When you do a monogram or a gobo, is that an extra enhancement that you charge a fee for? Or is that something you include in a package? Um, we have that in our one of our packages called the Perfect Day Package, which is our DJ photo booth package, and that comes with it. And then it also comes with our DJ services, wedding DJ services. Um, again, we don't charge extra for it; it's already, you know, we have together. <laughs> had some people who were just doing decor for it, ask for it, and we. I put a price on it because obviously yeah we just but it is that, uh but... it in our lowest package which is just ceremony and dj uh we we do include it i believe are you yeah, are you do, do are you doing stagnant or are you doing video oh uh, we can do either but i normally do uh stagnant okay um but yeah i can i can do the video but i usually like you're talking like where like it like writes itself out every 15 minutes or Three yeah, minutes, yeah. I've done it, 
Um, but I normally just do stagnant. Are you going are you going through a company or are you doing it yourself? We make I, them ourselves. I make them on Canva. Yeah. Okay. Cause I go I through I, I go I, through a projectogram. Yeah. And I send customers to my digital gobo. There's no pricing there. They can then yeah. pick what gobo they want. And the pictures, images I always show of the I, I, I show some of the stagnant ones, the stagnant gobos. But I always show the video ones that do the cool things like lanterns and write names and the cool stuff. And I charge, I, my top package has a basic gobo. And when they go to a motion gobo, I charge an extra fee for that because there, there's a difference in price between the two. And what I found is the nice thing about having that, send them to a website and having them pick it, it's not a bad fee. You know, I know, I'm, again, you guys are doing it. You guys can have that. But it's one of the things I could send someone there and not say, like, walking through a bunch of pictures, oh, you got this gobo, that gobo, or they come yeah. up with their own ID and they come in there and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I can't do that. This way you kind of have a controlled set to do that on. And that, that's why I found works best for me. Everyone does things differently. You know, I know people do uh, yep. you know, Adobe uh, Acrobat and they can draw, make a movie out of it if they want to. <laughs> I was at first, I was actually making them in Photoshop. The first yep. couple, uh, but now I, I pay for Canva and I literally use it for almost. Oh everything. yeah, I Canva's made a photo great. strip with it the other day, but um, I have a similar thing for my photo strips. It's a uh, ProPhotoBoothTemplate.com, I believe, but they have a widget that same thing. Like you go to my website slash photo booth templates, and it looks like it's my website. They can pick it. They pick their colors, everything. It sends me an email, and I can just buy it. Yeah, and it's, usually. It's, it's just so much easier. Yeah, and usually for the monograms, I'll, like, make four different ones, and I'll be like, do you like any of these? Or, like, they'll I'll be like, do you want it to say anything specific or look a certain way? And usually they don't care, and they like what uh, one of the ones we make. Anymore, <laughs> you can type wedding monogram in the search on Canva, and it'll make five I'll do it for you. Yeah. No. <laughs> you guys are doing too much. I, I hate – I personally hate Canva. Um, I absolutely hate oh, it. Canva. It's such it's a horrible just, interface. It's just, it's tell, not. Tell, tell us how you really feel, Matt. <laughs> I hate Canva. I hate it. Um, I use it. It for has come a simple, long way. What do you I use it, it for on? the simplest <laughs> things and that's it. But like the app itself is so garbage in terms of use it. On so, your phone? Yes. The phone. Oh, don't oh, use yeah. it on your phone. Don't you gotta use, use it on, on your phone. phone. The website, <laughs> the desktop, desktop's fine. The phone version, <laughs> like trying to change one little thing with multiple layers and like having to click five different times to get somewhere and then it doesn't know what you want. Oh. And then like you put a picture on it and it's pixelated until like five seconds later when it processes it. Ugh. I, yeah, I like. So I'll, be cussing, your... I'll be cussing in the next room. I'll be like, she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I got to get my laptop out. This is just Yeah, it's laptop. It's yeah. fine. It's just yeah, it, it's I tried... terrible. I tried yeah, to do them on yeah, Canva right here. Yeah, I, my, I, I, I use the app sometimes, but yeah, computer. But I, I yeah. tried to do a monogram there because I, my, my, uh, uh, my dumbass forgot to order it in time for the client. So, uh, it was the day of, and I'm like, oh crap, I got to do a monogram. So I'm just like going on Canva, and I, oh, when I exported it, I did the transparent background, but then the projector showed it super wonky, like really wide. And I have just regular project, like it's a nice projector, but I literally had to stretch it in Photoshop like four times the height. And then it would like compress it somehow in the projector. And that's my thing with, I, I use Projectogram all the time because uh, that's like my only bit of YouTube cloud is I get all the designs for free no matter what. So uh, I don't charge for digital versus animated anyway, but like when you get it back from them, it is perfectly ready to use in any projector, like with any flash drive don't attached, they give you, right to go. Don't they give you all the file formats and like? A, you, they give you a bunch of. They give you like six resume. sizes. They're all PNGs, but they give you like six different sizes. I always just use the extra small because my projector can zoom anyway, and um, it's it's not a short throw project. It's well, it's not a long. I, I don't know, but it's yeah. I do have that problem, so I I have like a one that has worked on my projector. And I'll mm -hmm. just open that up and, you know, cut out the oh, okay. old one, black it out, put the new one on that hey. one and save it. So then yeah. it, I, I, don't think, I don't think your I don't think your microphone's on. I'm hearing your microphone on your on your wife's, not on yours. Did you turn my mic off? There you go. You're on now. <laughs> but to answer his buddy's question, I, I don't uh like we let the client choose cold sparks or monogram um nobody ever chooses them honestly my my clients don't really care like 
they want me because they want awesome music and a good light show. They don't really care about sparklers or a monogram. They want like epic lighting. <laughs> I'm sorry, lasers and crap, but <laughs> they uh, edit that out. Sorry, I will. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they like um, they like the cool stuff. Like whenever I tell them, like, oh, he's so sorry. Like your venue, like they'll say, oh, our venue doesn't allow it, and I'm like, do you want the monogram instead? And they're like, no, nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> and and then yeah, if you use projectogram, buddy, like I always, the people always choose like 101. They always choose like something from the first five. I very rarely get somebody that goes to even the second page ever or even like second or third. And there's so many cool ones on the later pages, but they always choose like 101 to 110. Like I very rarely get ones for the. I, I get mostly, I get mostly the, I usually get the motion ones, the animated gobos. That's the ones I usually get more they of. Choose, they never seem to choose those. I give them the option and I say like, go to this other tab. Do you, do you have video or pictures of them working of cool stuff? there you go that's that's a sales part right there (laughs) so i noticed the same thing though with the photo booth widget they pick the same template everybody you gotta stop it guys yeah i (laughs) I use a site i use a site here's here's a secret for people i use a site called templatesbooth.com they're based out of the uk and they do they upload like five or six new designs every week but it's in chronological order so there's 30 or 40 pages that they can go through and find a design they like. And I very rarely get the same ones uh, multiple times. There'll be, a, there'll be some that are like more popular than others, but it's a great site. And I paid for an unlimited membership it was like 150 or $200 for lifetime. Now they don't do that anymore. It's like 15 <laughs> or 20 bucks a month, but they give you the files when you, you download a zip file comes with all the PNGs. If you're just lazy comes with all the Photoshop files, all of darkroom booth files, all of DSLR booth files. And I think it also comes with in maybe snap pick or one of the, one of the other ones too. So you could just go right into your software. I personally put it in Photoshop, edit it, take the pictures out, put it as a PNG and then have it layered so that when I put it in my photo booth software, the pictures come behind the actual design. So that way, like I don't, it, I, the thing I don't like the most is when you see a photo booth strip and the pictures look like they were just kind of like cut out and pasted on top of it. Like I want it to look like it's part of the design. So I hide my pictures behind the design so there's no overlap and it actually looks really nice. And they have every single size when you download that zip file from four by six to two by six to, uh, and then they have them in like 10 or 12 different layouts too. So like your clients can choose if they want four pictures or two pictures or they want vertical or horizontal orientation. Like it's endless. And they also give you the welcome screen too with the little tap to start that you can put whatever buttons over it. So templatesbooth.com. There's Matt's useful tip of the year. (laughs) Give divulging secrets. They're the best that by far it's the only one I use. They do have a fancy widget too. I haven't implemented it because I'm lazy. I just say, here's the website, choose what you like. <laughs> Sounds like they owe you some templates. They should, they they do. <laughs> I mean, they owe me, like I said, my payment was one time lifetime fee. I might owe them. People that were on that. So <laughs> everyone else that it, signs up pays monthly. And that's that's the one of the things like, you know, again, going back to the Gobos, it, it's, 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 I try to make it easy, simple for the clients. But mm-hmm. going back to what I initially said about the lighting, pictures pictures and video i have of weddings i put on social media stuff i've captured i have a video i, I actually tonight i showed uh, the couple tonight we just talked to a little bit a little bit ago explaining to them what a gobo is and you know showing them uh, there's a i have a video of the of a bride and the photographer like pulling out her dress and putting it down on the ground and she has the castle and it has chinese lanterns going up and you know all this beautifulness, and then I showed a final product, the picture of the two of them, with God bless you, uh, with the two of them next to each other, uh, husband and wife, Dean and Michael, and I showed a picture of that. They're standing there, and you know the, the the image of it on her dress, and people are like, oh my, I want that, and that's the impactful thing you do go to because that is an option and an enhancement. You know, again, I charge more for it because it's a more expensive file, but it adds more to what I'm offering. So if I'm doing a more basic package, I can offer a few enhancements to make it customized for the two of them. And it's not outrageously expensive, but the thing is that it has an extra um, 
fun stuff to get in there. Um, I got dinner. Yeah, okay. you got to go to dinner. Oh, see, I said you, I. Gave, you gave your you gave your special information. They got to run off and eat, man. Yeah, <laughs> people say I'm not helpful. People say I hold on to my secrets. There you go for the there. Well, there you go. The Sixty see? people that watch this. Don't, wor don't worry, DJ Sol says you're very helpful. Thank you. I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> go enjoy. Go and go enjoy dinner with your beautiful girlfriend. All right. Thank you. How do you know she's no beautiful? problem, man? So, <laughs> Hunter, uh, uh, for you, you you don't do uh, you don't do any projection or photo booth, but is no. that something that you ever thought about doing, or is that something you're like, yeah, I just don't want to do it? No, nah, it's not really what I want to do. It's too complicated for me. I don't want. No, to... that's that's fine. But I like to do. I like to keep things simple. Just two stage lights, my two Sean Wishbox twos, two speakers, my controller, and just my dj boo that's and that's, that's the thing is that sometimes less is more yeah and that that's it gets it gets complicated and overstimulates people because oh, yeah. I, I don't know about uh, jordan and taylor or uh, Dwayne or jeff when there's a photo booth at your event do you see a, a a floor drain that means basically people get drained from the floor when photo booth opens and they run toward a photo booth and then you have like half as many people dance at the dance floor because they run to the photo booth because the photo booth is open. I, I've run to that plenty of times. That's like, oh, photo booth's open. Everybody's got to run to the photo booth real quick and get their selfies and get their pictures and get their Jerry Springer beats and then come back to the dance floor. So I don't know if you guys run into that, but I've run into that plenty of times. And I feel sometimes, you know, photo booth can be uh, a distraction, but I know clients love it and they want to capture those moments. So either Jeff or Dwayne, uh, have you seen that for a photo booth? And do you guys offer photo booth or gobos for your events? I do not offer a photo booth. I leave that up to uh, the pros that know what they're doing with that. And it's not distracting for me. Um, I, I personally think that if a client is paying for a photo booth, then that's what they want and that's what they need. And that's fine. You know, they're paying me to play music. They're playing, they're paying the guy, at the photo booth to take pictures. So that I got no problem with people running off the dance floor. I'm not that, I don't have that much of an ego to think that, you know, I am the only thing that is happening that night. So uh, if, if they're, they're running off and taking pictures, you know, they'll probably have to stand in line uh, and they'll probably get tired of that. And they'll probably come back to the dance floor. No big deal. So, but I, I think photo booths are great. Uh, it's a, it's an awesome ad. Um, I just personally don't have one. I, I don't anticipate um, getting into that business. Yeah, I, I never, I never added one either. I always let like you. I let someone else do it. What about you, Dwayne? Um, no. Um, but I have. Um, uh, I do have numbers. So if they want a like a three hundred and sixty or a photo booth, I do have people that I throw business to, and you know I do the music, and they'll come and do the photo booth. As far as the gobos. Personally, I haven't done it. The um, guy that I used to um, DJ with that did weddings, he'll offer that. But the closest thing to that would be at my school where I would set up the projector and I'd make like backdrops and all that kind of stuff. But then that will be a separate package if I was to do that for somebody else. And, you know, that, that again, that's one of the things that every market's different. So when you guys are watching this, we have DJs, even like Jordan Taylor, which is, Ah, like an hour east of me, just across the border in Indiana. Um, you know, it, it, they're a little different than what we are here. Not because it's a different state, just a different area of the of the Chicagoland area. And then you look at different DJs in different markets, like, you know, you have Ohio, North Carolina, South Carolina. And again, cool thing. And uh, Jeff are right by each other. So Hunter and Jeff are not far from each other. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're two close states, but they have totally different clientele totally different areas, you know, like cool things right there uh, closer to the ocean and Jeff's further inland. So totally different areas. So this is gives you kind of gives you some ideas on things. Doesn't mean you have to run out and you have to do this. It's to give you guys ideas and thoughts like, Hey, do I want to do this? How do I do this? And a little bit of marketing too, because it, you could take this to anything, taking pictures, having video and showcasing the stuff that you do be it a gig log, be it on social media of anything, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, anything like that, stuff that you can show clients, hey, 
uh, I do this, right. this, and this, that can help you and make you a expert in that area. So they see you as someone who knows and are passionate about taking care of their event, be it a wedding, be it a birthday party, be it whatever it is that you do. You want to make sure that those clients are happy with everything and they kind of, kind of know what's going to happen. They kind of like, oh yeah, hey, that's right. They're going to do some lighting. This room right here, yeah, it's kind of boring. I want to do this. I want to do that. Or hey, I know Cool Thing's got this cool machine. He presses a button and the lights change instantaneously and it'll do something else for me. I like that. So it gives you a different look and feel. Plus, look at other DJs in your market and see what they're doing. And, and that sounds bad. I'm not trying to downplay those DJs. But you want to make yourself different from them. If everyone's the same, then everything's the same. If you everything's vanilla, if you want to be chocolate, strawberry, whatever your flavor is, then be that. But also quote. you want to make sure it's properly done, done right. And then you also want to make sure it's attractive. And you also want to make sure that your the, the guests are there. Enjoy it. You don't want to make sure you're annoying with them. You don't want to blind them with lights. You don't want to make your ears bleed with sound. You want to make sure it's that proper level of things. Um, let's see. I'm going to answer some answers here. Uh, I know I, a lot of people have said a lot of stuff here. And Jeff's been in here talking a little bit. Um, let's see here. Uh, yes, uh, Kevin. Yeah, it helps to have a van. But uh, like uh, Jeff said, he has them semi-assembled for his vehicle. Uh, I'm just blessed that I can keep them on my vehicle for the uh, collapsible totems. Uh, that makes it very fun, but it's one of the things that it's not for every single event because never one does that package. You're on the vehicles because I can grab them, get them off of there, but it's like anyone who has a trailer or they have a dedicated vehicle for it. It's nice to have. Um, the other thing also is that, you know, if you say you're, you know, economic pricing, again, every market's different, but maybe if you do some different things, you can actually say, hey, I'm charging a few bucks more. I'm $100 more than DJ down the street because I do ABC or XYZ. So it gives you differentiate, it differentiates you from them and they understand why you're a few bucks more. Why is Taylor and Jordan more money than DJ down the street? Well, their husband and wife team, they offer this. They offer all this other stuff. How is that different from the guy down the street? The guy down the street just does sound. He does some basic lighting uh, or he has very old equipment or she they're running, you know, halogen lights still from the eighties and they have very old equipment. It doesn't sound good. Something like that. You can say, okay, you're not trying to sound bad about that, but Mr. Or Mrs. Client to let you know the lighting there, it's older technology. This is what I do. This is how I can show you how I'm a little different than everyone else in the area. And Jason with, with Dwayne, how do I sound different than someone else? Hey, you know what? I have these things called line arrays. They're not the typical speaker on top of a pole. Or Jeff can go to a school and be like, hey, you know what? Here's a video of my last gig log of a prom I did or of a school dance I did. Or here is an event I did. Look at this. And cool thing can show a party. Hey, here's a party you did on a beach. Look how I did the sound. Look how I did this stuff. Look how I put the lights. The birthday party you just put up there at um, not too long ago how you did that and it was raining a little bit, a little misty, how you moved your equipment and stuff. You showed that you have professionals and you understand, hey, now you got to protect my equipment. I need to protect the guests there. And that's what makes you different from other people. You're showing your expertise and showing your client how you can make their event better. And that's that's marketing. That, that shows them that, again, you're an expert. And that's what we try to do. We try to make sure to help you out with that. And don't fit, fall in the same pitfalls we all fell into. And maybe, again, you look at something a little differently and go, hey, you know, I can do this a little different now. Or I can do this now. We're more confident doing something. It's always, always a work in progress. So I'm going to uh, go through this one real quickly. Um, now, again, we talked about garbage, we talked about some lighting and stuff like that. But one thing also, when you talk to clients – and you're talking to people is when you're in front of them, either in person or a zoom chat or in whatever, and you're talking to a client about their event, 
do you talk to them a little bit about yourself for them to get to know you a little bit and understand how you are, how you do things, or do you just concentrate about the event? Because I know Tracy and I, we talk about who we are, not what we're going to do for them, but how we look at things and how we are people who are to define roles. But the thing is that, you know, how do you, you know, do you, how do you communicate to people when you meet them, when you talk to them, you know, Hey, I'm buddy. This is Tracy. Um, you know, she handled lights. I handle light sound and music. She handles coordination time management. And this is what we do. And we want to get them. We want them to get to know us. So they kind of feel, you know, like they know us. They are not, we're not strangers at the end of the meeting. So when you sit down and talk to a client, I'm going to start with Jeff with this one. What are some of the things that you do? Do you, how do you break the ice? How do you talk to them? How do you kind of like, you know, explain to them what you do? If it's a couple, a uh, wedding couple, first thing, you know, I'll introduce and I'll talk to them for a second. And one of my first questions is, how did you meet? And they won't stop talking usually. It's usually a funny story. It's usually, it breaks the ice. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I like to get to know them. Absolutely. This one of the questions I like to ask, um, if I'm doing an event like a school dance or something, I like to ask a question, uh, have you been in charge of the dance in the past? And if they have, I'll ask them, you know, what did you like about the previous DJ? What did you not like? What are you looking for? What, you know, how, how, how would you like it to be different? How would you like it to be better? Uh, so I can try to find out, you know, to have a baseline there to, uh, to work from. So it, it usually helps to, uh, you know, to find out what their goal is, you know, what they're trying to achieve. So that, that's, that's usually my first questions. And th that's very important. Cause again, uh, you want to have a, that goal is very important for what they were trying to, uh, you know, aspire to do. And you want to make sure you reach that goal with them and you share that vision because I, again, I, I'm a guy and I think Taylor probably can, as a young lady, she probably had a goal of a vision of what she wanted her wedding. I know Tracy had a vision of what she wanted her wedding. I, I, as a guy, I didn't have that vision. I, I know I wanted some things and most guys usually, they want to make their wives happy, their girlfriends happy, their fiancés happy. Or they want to make someone else happy, and it's 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 understanding that and taking that vision that someone has, either guy, girl, or whatever, and sharing that vision and making sure it, you understand it so you make it to come to fruition is very very important. And it, it's also understanding that there's two people there, especially a couple, that are talking, and you want to get both sides so it's equal to both of them, and they both have what they want. And I think that's a very important thing is asking them. What is their goal at the end of the day? It's a school dance. We have 300 kids. Okay. How do we, you know, how, how do we get to the end of that goal? You know, how, how what are we trying to do? Is it a celebration? Is it, you know, a prom? What is it? You know, stuff like that. Or is it a wedding? Or is it a corporate event? You know, are you trying to showcase something? Uh, Mr. Dixon, for you, sir, how do you do it? How do you, uh, how, how do you get that ball rolling with clients when you're sitting in front of them or talking to them on Zoom or even on the phone? I used to like introduce myself and go through the whole spiel, but I found that normally lately my clients already had looked me up. They already kind of like know me. So we just get right to um business. Like what is, again, what is your vision? What are you looking for? How can I help make that vision come, um, come true for you all? So that's basically where I stick with. Just go back and forth, get to know them. And then, that's, that's not, it's like, I don't go out my way to do, you know, say, go into in particular, like what kind of equipment I use. It's just. Oh, no, no, no. You want to go in particular. It, it's it's like a mechanic showing you all the tools they're going to use to work on your car. You want your car right. to work at the end of the night. <laughs> you, know, you don't care what uh, tools they use. Well, unless you geek out on tools like I do, you know, like, oh, you got Milwaukee, you got the Walt. What do you, you got? You know, you got Snap on, you know, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff I can kind of geek out on a little bit. But most people are not going to geek out on that stuff. They're going to want to know how you're going to make stuff. But when you're talking to them, again, social media is very important, like you're saying. And they can look you up and look at what you've done on social media. Look at your YouTube channel. Look at your Instagram. Look at your Facebook. Look at stuff. And, and they can see stuff you've done. But also, that you know, the, the reason I'm saying this is because, I, I, I again, I'm sure you're trying to do the same, you do the same thing. 
is I want people to feel at ease when they're talking to me and feel like they're not talking to a, someone trying to sell them something that they feel like they're like a friend, you know, that it's right. a friendly, there's, there's no pressure. I'm not a used car salesperson. I'm not trying like the cars guys call it the box when they bring you in the office and the manager comes in and says, how, how can we get you to sell, you know, buy the car today and drive out here today. I don't want to do that. You know, I want to get people, let, let them figure out what they want to do. They want to go with us or they want to go with another DJ. Hey, God bless. No big deal. But I want them to feel good when they walk away from us. So that's, that's one of the things I, again, I know how, how pleasing you are as a person. I you know, get to talk to you all the time. It's always awesome. And I see that in you. And I see a lot of people probably see that as well, how great of a person you are, but also, you know, it, it's, it's one of the things that I, I, I you know, um, when you talk to someone, how do you make them feel at ease with you? But but it's basically once I tell them like I'm a music teacher and I did X Y Z worked in the theater, they kind of like already know that I can make things happen and if there's a problem I'll solve it. Now also another selling point that I use is um, I have the Bible app, so I tell them how I incorporate that into their planning, and that pretty much sells a lot of them, knowing the fact that they can always have have input whenever they feel like um they want to input something and we can always go back on the fourth even after hours and stuff so we don't have to be face to face or on a phone we can always communicate and keep things going and that's the thing like we i use viable as well and the viable app does help me out quite a bit especially keeping things organized and it shows at least for what i run into for the clientele that we have it shows organization for them again, less worry. And that's again another yeah. thing that helps them. So these these are the things that you know you put those breadcrumbs out for people for them to come to you so they have less worry, less, you know, they're not panicking, like, oh my God, the the you know, yeah, is is my milk gonna be okay? Is the music gonna be okay? Oh my god, did people run around? You don't want them panicking, you want them to feel confident in you, but you also want them to feel that you know. You you understand what they want. You you know what you're going to give them, and they have confidence not only in you, but again, they feel relaxed. They can talk to you. They can they talk to you like anyone else. They don't feel like they're being sold. And that's one last thing I do. I don't want to sell people. I want to explain to people stuff so they feel confident in us. And they hire us because of the fact that it's great. And I saw um, oh the Sox are playing. Oh Adrian, he just told me it's uh, five nothing Sox versus Cubs. That's that's our crosstown rivalry right now. So um it was the game was delayed the last time I saw it before we came on the show. Uh so great. Um Adrian E says I introduce myself. I give a small bio about myself and things that are important to me to help other uh help clients uh for their events. It usually helps them make them feel comfortable. That's very true. And again, that's what everyone here has been saying. So I'm gonna go to, uh, to Taylor and Jordan. Um when you talk to clients, you know, what what is you, what do you do? How do you talk it? Again, there's two of you. How do you, you know, say, okay, I do this, she does this, or what do you do for when you talk to someone about what you do? Um, well, we usually, well, there's usually not like a real plan <laughs> with how we talk to them. I mean, basically how everyone else does it. I mean, we try to get to know them, um, yeah, I see their vision, but we also kind of let them know. Like, we do want to get to know you as a person. We want this, you know, we want to be personable. We want to be able to talk back and forth. And if that's not something you can do or you're you're just looking for someone to press play, we're probably not the DJ for you. Um, So we also let people know that. <laughs> yeah, we kind of, like, I usually, like, we, we really don't start by trying to sell them anything. And really, yeah. I don't necessarily, I do want to sell them something, but... I mean, if we're not vibing, I we're want them to book me in. because they <laughs> like me, I guess, like because they want me as their DJ because we met and they like, you know, just like an interview when they leave and they're like, well, there's two guys and they're equally skilled, but we, we like that one better. And I want to work with yeah, them every day. Yeah, we people that want Taylor and Jordan. <laughs> They want the Taylor and Jordan experience. <laughs> you know, because like the other guy's kind of stiff and uh, I don't want to work with him every day. And, you know, and that that's an important thing. <laughs> Tracy and I also, you know, we 
kind of like you guys look at the same way as husband and wife and as business partners, you know, do they want to have the two of us or do they want DJ down the street? DJ down the street may do something different. We don't do, but kind of like you said, if they just want to DJ press play and do that, that not what we right. do. That's our forte. Okay. Not a problem. No, no harm, no foul. But you know, it, that's an important thing for them to get to know you guys and say, like you said, uh, you know, Jordan is they, there's two people you're interviewing and Hey, I like this person. I want to work with this person. That's a big thing. That is a huge thing that they feel confident and, working with you. Um, doing work for another DJ. Like I always say this to Taylor, we have two completely different clients and like, I can meet with someone and be like, they would be a good client for that person because they're just like his clients always end up being those type of people where our clients end up being more, you know, like-minded with us and not, you know, um, you know, like if Hank Hill walked in my office, I'm going to send him to the DJ that's follows, you know, Mr. Rules. If parties, they want an EDM party, I'm going to send them to Matt you know, kind of thing. Like I, I have a book of people who I'm friends with and we work with and other DJs. And if I see you fit them better. And I mean, well, I mean, if you really want to, if you really want to book us, but yeah, I mean, we would have to clash pretty hard before I'm like, get out of my office. But, <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, just... I want them to book me because they want us as their DJ because of, I, you know, and don't take this wrong necessarily because we guys... can mix good or anything like that. Just, because we're personal and we're I, I can never see you guys clash with anyone. I, I again, I, I, I've talked to both of you guys at wedding Hi. shows, Hi. and I will tell you, and I've, I've said it before, you guys are really, really nice in, in person, and that's why you know, one of the reasons why I, I want you on the show is that you have great personalities and you're awesome people, and that's you, you guys, I don't see anyone ever. You clash with anyone. Yeah. You're very nice and you're very professional. And that's I wouldn't that say we great do. thing about you. I guys. guess what we're saying more is it's like um I I want someone to respond to me. Like when we have a few meetings throughout the process, when we have our discovery meeting, our like final meeting, like have those meetings with me. Don't blow me off because that has happened. And then you want to wait till the last minute. And I'm not doing that. It's so much harder to do your wedding. Too, I'm not going to chase you and send you 20 emails and 10 text messages. Like if you can't respond to me and come meet me when we need to meet, then we can't. I don't want to. Had to <laughs> had to call you six times just because like I wasn't sure on the pronunciation of your last name. and You wouldn't meet me. You just like refused like, to like answer answer questions. questions. <laughs> That's like, a hard I one. And yeah. I I want I want to ask this real quick before I go to a cool thing. It's happened to Tracy and I when you set up a meeting with someone and you get ghosted. How many people here have been ghosted for meetings? Oh, after they, they pay, hands. after no, they pay, or no, no, after, after they they before oh. the first the first meeting, either a Zoom <laughs> oh, meeting yeah. or all the time in person. All the time. And you know, it, it's it's to me, it's just it, it, that they're right there when they do that. Uh, and you know, we we we'll reach back out and say, hey, you know. Uh, and that sound bad. We had a meeting at, you know, whatever time on Zoom or at this Panera or this Starbucks at this time, you know, can you make it? You know, what happened? Because things happen. Sometimes flat tire, someone gets sick, you know, uh, you know, house on fire, whatever it is, things happen. And I don't want to look at the bad side, but when you hear nothing back, it's kind of a crappy thing, you know, to, to do to someone because we're all small business people. We're asking, you're coming to us and asking us, hey, I, I want to talk to you about, you know, my event, my wedding, my birthday party, whatever the event is. And they're ghosting you and we had to hunt you down as a customer. That's kind of a bad thing because we're trying to help you and we, we can't chase after you and hold your hand the whole entire time. And Taylor and Jordan, I know sometimes it, it, we run into it, trying to get a hold of customers and having that uh, hard uh the hard pull, basically trying to get them to respond to emails, not fun. We have a uh, a booking software on our on our website that syncs with our calendars, and we'll only let you book when we're available. Um, and we do. I would say that I can usually call them when I how I see them and know like we're they're probably not going to show up for this one. Um, well, you know, I book it. Don't waste my time. Well, then I gotta like you get them at three in the morning, and you know I always I will 
do the research, Chef. Look up the name and the email and the phone number and see if it's legitimate. And our software, will it, uh, it reminds them of the meeting. It sends them a reschedule link a day before. It sends them a map two hours before. So, so sometimes if they click that link and reschedule, it's usually legitimate. But if they just give you a BS excuse that they're just... They're, some they're people not your just, client then. They think... Exactly. Yeah, they think I believe them. And it's just like, ah, you're not my client. It's going to be like this the whole entire time. You know what? I don't have time for this. this I don't I don't have the mental capacity left to deal with you. This is very true. I have two small children. I can't deal with you. <laughs> you got enough, you got enough things. You got enough things going on. I'm tired uh, enough. <laughs> Hunter, uh, when you talk to a client, how do you get talk to a client when you meet them? for them to have confidence in you as a business owner? Well, most of the people I talk to are friends from school, friends from church and family members, but they already have a trust in me as a DJ that I know that I'll do a good job and they know that I'll hype up the crowd. And we don't really talk much. It's just um, just one question. How much do you charge and are you available? Stuff like that. And when I say yes, I'm, there, and then I'm in. Well, they already know you. They already know your personality. They already know you as a good as yeah, a good they, person. They know, yeah, yeah. They that, that, that's a that's a big leg up in that because they already have that personal, uh, yeah. you know, connection with you, and yeah. they already know you. What kind of you know? Hey, it's Hunter. Hunter is a great guy. You know, Hunter. Yeah, I'd go to. I'd go to dinner. I I I, I would go any again. I said it before anyone here, I would go to dinner with, um, because everyone here is really cool. The uh, the the thing is that you know. Uh, when you talk to people and stuff like that, that's a big thing. And you still want to install confidence in them and you have the confidence to explain what you can do. And that's that's a great thing. Is there is there uh, anything more, Hunter? Do you talk to them about what you do? No, or is, you know, not really. No? Okay. No, not really. Okay. Well, again, that's that's one of the things. Again, explain to them what you do and how you how you can do it is always an important thing. Wow, the hour's gone by pretty quick as oh. always. It's always sneaks up on me. We always go a couple minutes over, which uh, it just happens. Uh, but I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, we'll have uh, hopefully some other DJs back next week. They're not gigging. They're not running around doing stuff or doing uh, all the little life things. But I'm going to have actually have Hunter take us out tonight on the round table here. Hunter, take us away. All right. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of the DJ Roundtable. And we'll catch you guys next week. Peace out. Good night, everyone. Have fun. Please subscribe.